Welcome to the Massage Hodge podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Barb Helding with Zen Diggity Massage, a fellow licensed massage therapist in Racine, Wisconsin. Hello. <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm, I'm excited. So um, Ohio episode came out recently. And after Ohio, Wisconsin is my like next home state. Besides, awesome. or, besides Oregon, of course, where I live now. <laughs> but when I was a kid, my mom is the oldest of eight children. She grew up in uh, outside of Milwaukee. Very and, cool. And she lives there again. And a couple of my siblings, I have many siblings, six of them to be to be exact. That's a big family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, two of them live there in uh, Shorewood. I how far is Racine from Milwaukee? About 40 minutes. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. it's pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. We could have an in-person coffee next time I visit the uh, the family there. Yes, we could. Who you have the coffee, I'll have the tea. <laughs> oh, the tea. Okay, tea. Yeah, it's all good to me. Excellent. So, well, you're you're here uh, as the ongoing 50 Massage Therapists, 50 States series. You're here going to represent Wisconsin, the fine state of Wisconsin. So, before we get to Wisconsin, if you could give me a little uh, history about your origin story as it comes to massage therapy. Yeah, I, I actually started massaging a little over 12 years ago. And it was, it's, it started when I went to a massage therapist for my neck. I was, I was a, a tummy sleeper and I didn't know you weren't supposed to do that. I still do that. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> you still do that? Oh, I God. just end up there. I don't want to, I can't help it. You no, know, I think it comes from when we were babies, how we were on our stomach. It's just yeah. like this memory, but yeah. So being that I went to a massage therapist to help me with that, the torticollis. So it, I didn't realize that it, she could work on me and have it be completely painless. I, so when I sat up after she worked on me and I was able to turn my head both ways with no restrictions, I thought, oh my gosh, I really would love to do this for other people. Yeah. And so then I, I started to look into it more and it actually took five years of consistently calling the local school and saying, can you send me another book like every year <laughs> <laughs> and just every year turning it down? Oh no, I'm not ready. Then I ended up finally deciding to do it and went to a school in the Milwaukee area. It, the school is not there anymore, but they were accredited and the one in Racine was not. Mm. So that was kind of the determining factor there. And the lady who I was inspired by is still in practice. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's pretty excellent. cool. So uh, the name Zendiggity, where did that come from? <laughs> A 90s song. Is it really? <laughs> yes. I don't know it. <laughs> yes. Yes, huh. yes. You'll have to look it up. I'll have to send it to you. Yeah. I'll no look it baby. up. Interesting. I feel like now, now I'm trying to think of it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up later. Okay, so uh, origin story check. So what, what does it take to become a massage therapist in the state of Wisconsin? I had to look this up, Nick, because it's well, been a while. Fine. Yeah, yeah I had to look it up. It's 600 hours of, okay. but my schooling was over 700. So they must have just decided to be overachievers. I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I think a lot of school, schools in different states that tend to do that. My, my mm -hmm. school, East West College here in Portland, is over the requirement as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So it used to be a national exam that has since changed to the MBLEX. So, okay. And I don't know too much about the MBLEX, to be honest, since it was after but, my time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I haven't quite um, gotten to figure out how many states are MBLEX, but it's quite a few now. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. So, so it's just the, the hours, the, uh, uh, does it have to be an accredited program? Is that part of the, or did you just choose that because? I, I chose it because I thought, oh, if later on I want to work in say a doctor's office or something like that, gotcha. I, I think they would probably want someone who went to an accredited yeah. school. So I was thinking ahead. So, <laughs> smart. So you did the, <laughs> so you did the hours and you took what, what, what now one would take the MBLEX and then you right. just fly through your state. So it's pretty, pretty typical. It's, it's pretty typical. Yeah, it's and perfect. then every two years, it's the 24 continuing ed that you need, two okay. of which need to be ethics. So, yeah. Yeah. The continuing ed has been an ongoing sort of evolving concept in my mind. Like <laughs> in, in my mind, it's like 
easy to get the continuing ed because right. we're therapists and we love to learn. Yes. But at the same time, I've been known to put it off. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> the procrastination in us. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, maybe it's not. So, but, I, but my point is like some states that don't have the CE requirement right. Right. can see how it would be easy just, you know, to kind of let it slide. I think so. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the requirement being there when it comes when it comes to these rules, just to kind of on our toes, to keep (laughs) us on our toes, and sort of keep us committed to the like for me, like keeps me committed to the say the the thing I say I'm committed to. Yes, I would wouldn't want to let it slide. So you've been listening to these episodes. Do you have any strong opinions about a national standard? Is it? It's just like a weird pipe dream. I I don't know what. I'm, uh, yeah. As far as a national standard in massage. Yeah. Like, um, like one set of rules that says a, a, a massage therapist goes to this number of hours in a program and, and they all take this test. And I, I like the idea helpful. that it would be easier to move between states and practice. Oh, yes. Yes. I see where you're going with that. Like, that would be cool mm-hmm. to me. But the, I, yes. it's, everyone I've asked basically has been like, yeah, that would be neat. Good luck. You know? Because. <laughs> When you think about someone, I'm going to bring Joyce up, actually. Since yeah, she's Joyce Gothier, the sailing massage therapist. Yes. From the New York episode. Right. And, and you are so, an admin for her group as well. Yes. Yeah. And so with Joyce, she's traveling all the time. Mm-hmm. For her, it would definitely be nice for her to have this universal... Um, like teaching yeah. type of thing or universal where she can massage anywhere she wants. Yeah. I love the idea of like taking an RV and like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, so cool. Like, yes. Set up on all the beaches. Oh my gosh. Yeah, can you even imagine? On the move and yeah, it'd be really neat. <laughs> but you I like that idea. You're on the right track, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could just, well, I think there's only four States where there's no rules. So you could just go to those States. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So yeah, the national standards are a curious thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, before before we talk about the current crisis, I, I noticed when I was reading, uh, doing my research, you know, I have a clipboard. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, research. <laughs> uh, so the um, one of the things that you like to do in your practice is a lot of sideline. And I would love you if you just spe- speak about sideline because it's something I'm not skilled at. It's something I haven't tried a lot. So I would just, for my own edification, like, Why do you like sideline so much and what do you get out of it? Oh, I love sideline work. I have been doing it for probably four or five years more steady, maybe even a little bit longer than that because the first six years of my career, I was actually at Massage Envy and one of the uh, lead therapists, one of the lead therapists, uh, she worked that way. And so I was able to experience how it felt. And I thought, Oh my gosh, I should be doing this. Mm. So then I started to do it with clients. If I felt like there were, there's sometimes clients will have a shorter neck. So sometimes you want them on their side. You can get, you can get in there uh. a little bit more into all the nooks and crannies. You can get into the QLs differently you can get into more the lateral of the leg, just areas that are a little more trickier being in prone or supine. And a lot of clients actually love it so much more because there's a lot of sideline sleepers out there. Mm. And that plus if about it. like why why do I have apprehension around it? Is it the draping? Is that why is that I think it's the draping. I think that's That's it. Yep. That's how it was for me too at first. So what you could do if you want to start trying it is if you have someone that comes in that they just want their back, neck and shoulders, you could say, do you want to try something? And then you know, you're not going to be undraping the legs. I think that's what caused me to not want to do it at first too, is, oh, this is going to be Mm. a little iffy undraping the legs and then tucking and lifting. But if you're just working on back, neck and shoulder, I think that would be prime for just attempting to work on it that way because then you're you're getting into different areas in fact i if i need to get into nobody likes this but that the under the underarm area i have them bring their arm over and you can just while they're laying oh yeah it's so much easier much it's easier. amazing yeah but, i think what i need to do is find a therapist and just kind of 
do a trade kind of let's play around and experiment with this. Yes. And when you, I'm telling you right now, come visit next time you come visit, I will show you how I do it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put you on the table and and you'll be like, Oh my God, I could totally do this. That's amazing. (laughs) Yep. I'm going to take you up on that invite. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be in Wisconsin, but uh, (laughs) I'll, I'll get there eventually. Awesome. Okay. So April, 2020. What a what a time to live through. We have the the current coronavirus crisis going on. Please update me on the state of your state, as it were. So Wisconsin, I know a lot of states are shut down, but Wisconsin, it's actually still legal technically to massage. Interesting. A lot of us are not, though. We took the route of just closing for the betterment of just keeping flatten the curve and do you think it's like 60 40 50 50 90 10 like how many are closed oh i want to say at least 80 20 okay. from what i've seen online because i kind of did a massage near me and checked out different areas just see like well who who is still open i'm just curious who might still be open and yeah no nope, i was going to facebook pages and i could see Pretty much everyone. There was maybe only two in Racine that were still open. So no indication from your, I mean, no orders from your state and also no guidance from your massage therapy licensing organization. I don't, an organ, it's the state board that licenses, but I don't know who it is there. Right. Well, Department of Health has pretty much stated an exemption massage therapy. So it's been left up to us to decide what we want to do. And Thankfully, the groups that are out there have have given some insight and on what we can expect. And and I've been just kind of following CDC and watching the numbers and seeing where we're at. And so for Wisconsin, it was just extended. It was supposed to lift April 24th or 25th in the morning. And then that's actually been extended to May 26th. So the safer at home, it's called every, I think every state called it something different, but it's the safer at home. Yeah. And so he put that into place. The the really curious thing that I found was that independent hairstylists were told shut it down, but yet massage therapists could still work. And I know that they're not, they're not as close, but they're still in close proximity of their clients, but they, we're actually closer to our clients than yeah. a hairstylist and the hairstylists were shut down. So I find that curious in Wisconsin. Is, is it, do you think it's because, no, because they're still one-on-one as well. It's not like a right. group thing. I, I do understand the, sh- the closing down of the bigger gathering places, like the salons and things like that. But you have yeah. to think there's a, there's a lot of hairstylists that are doing their own thing that rent a space with maybe only one other person. I I know my hair lady, she was, she, uh, she's in this, it's like a suite and each suite holds two stylists. So technically they could have said, okay, we'll work in shifts. Right. And and we'll just do one. on one. They got caught up. Like the government, when they made the ruling probably thought like, Oh, hair salons always have lots of people in them. Right. I think you're right about that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So Wisconsin. Okay. So that's yeah. I think that's you're the first state I've talked to that it hasn't been on a mandatory shutdown. With which comes with its own set of challenges that you can yeah. imagine because then it's up to the therapist. It's almost more. It's almost like a relief to me to not have to be right. grappling with that. Right. Right. I think I would be there right there with you though. I you know. It's hard because there's a part of you that oh, this person is in pain and now they're going to go back in that pain cycle. But then another part of you is like, okay, but more, it does more harm. I, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of where I heard this. It was something like the ben- if the benefit outweighs the risk or vice versa, but the risk outweighs the benefit right now because yeah. the, the numbers are still not at a place where we can say, okay, come on in. <laughs> right. You know? So I'd like to give that a little bit more time. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So what what have you been doing while you're not working? Uh, how are you occupying the time either personally or pro- professionally or communicating? Anything you want to share about that? So the, the first, 
I'll be honest, the first two or three weeks kind of felt a little frozen. I was, I was just in all of the, the massage groups while they say, Oh, some people were watching the news. I was watching press conferences and swimming in massage groups, which wasn't necessarily healthy either way, because there was, there's so many polarized views, Yeah, you know, where some people feel like even when the ban lifts in your state that you shouldn't go back to work. And there's a very strong feeling on that, that we should wait until there's a vaccine. I'm going to just put this out there. I don't think that's realistic for everyone to just close down for a year. I, you're going to have to take a long time, take a long time. So we almost have to reduce risk as much as we possibly can in our environments. If that includes reducing your hours or changing your hours so that you're not in the office at the same time as other practitioners, or in my case, I work in a chiropractor's office. I just rent space in there. And so I'm, I'm ha- my hours will be at times when there's not foot traffic in there. Mm. So it'll be later in the night, which people love anyway, because right. they got to work, they want to come in. This is perfect. So I'm doing that. I fully, I made a list and that's what, basically what I've been doing since I've been off is kind of adding to the list of, okay, what do I need to do now? I added a, an air purifier, HEPA filtered oh, air purifier. Yeah which I'll be completely honest, it's an air purifier is not going to take care of the virus, but what it can do is supplement. It'll give you kind of a cleaner environment Mm -hmm. and help with dust particles so that you're not triggering an immune response in your clients who may have other things going on. It seems Um, like a solid, yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited excited about that. Like I said, I'm I'm not trying to just open the doors right away, but I am being realistic and saying, okay, end of May, if our, if it's looking good in around Wisconsin area, I'm okay with taking, doing a slow rollout. Like you, like you hear a lot of States doing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In phases and in phases. Yep. Yeah. Bringing back the clients that have been waiting a couple months now to get in that are, cause I work it with paying clients only. So. Right. How do you think this, change like what does it do to the the industry the profession of massage therapy is it just heightened awareness about cleanliness? i mean it's i feel like there's massage therapists kind of in general have really high level of cleanliness practices and but this might raise it to a new level i but any thoughts you have about how it changes things going forward well, t- I could tell you two big ones right off the bat okay. <laughs> would be the the blanket. I know even in school, I think the blanket was in clinic. I want to say there was one blanket for the three, two or three clients we had. And I've even checked with colleagues on that that went to school with me and they agreed like, yeah, I think it was just one blanket. You kind of brought the sheet down to where the arms were resting on the sheet. Yeah. But we, my, we really- my, my school had blank fresh blankets, but I worked in some of the corporate settings like oh, you did. Yeah. They did I know. not. I know. I, like I said, I worked in a, in a franchise before and it was pretty much weekly that the table would be changed. It, just like a spa as well. It was weekly. Mm-hmm. And then when I went out on my own four years ago, it was daily. And I thought, well, this is good. I'm doing it daily. Yeah. No, it's, you know, there's never been a time to reassess that than now because yeah. You know, as we know, the virus can thrive on fabric, so we want to be changing it with every client. And I think that will be a huge eye opener for a lot of therapists because, yeah. I mean, just it became kind of a standard in the industry. Oh, change it daily, you know, mm-hmm. or weekly in some cases. But so that that's yeah. going to be I one was, of the big ones. I mm-hmm. talked to uh, Angie Bretz in the Georgia episode which as we're recording hasn't aired yet. But anyway, I was saying, telling her how I love the, the weighted blanket that I have, but I just got to get rid of it because it's so sad, isn't I it? Wash it every time. It's too, it's too much to, it's like a, it's like a total ordeal to. I know. Yeah. And I had, I had these bigger twin size blankets, comfy. It's from pins on if, if anybody's watching that, that um, is looking for a good brand P I N Z O N. Okay. And it's on Amazon and you can get the smaller 50 by 60 inch for $14.99. Oh, okay. Very reasonable. 
that's how much it is right now. Uh, I don't know what they'll up it to if they see a, an influx a of spike, people. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> but those are nice. I've had those before. I just, I upgraded to bigger blankets because I thought, oh, it's kind of nice that it just, no. So if we want, if we want more blankets, I think they kind of have to be a little smaller or a little thinner, something in there. Yeah. So, so that we're not doing six loads of laundry for one day. <laughs> and then I guess the, Maybe the stuck other, there too. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. The other thing that I was thinking, the other big one is, and I know some people really don't like this idea, but the mask. I had already been wearing one before uh, COVID. So Yeah. Well, were you wearing a mask? Not your client, but right. the practitioner. So I was wearing a mask before that, just at the head of the table to when your face was in the closest proximity to their face. Right. Okay. And now it, now I'll just be making it, it'll just, I'll still be wearing one, but making it the entire duration of the, which I can get away with because I'm in sideline. I'm sitting, I'm not doing a lot of physical, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, but there's that. And I think in order to have, and the studies have shown that if you're both wearing a mask, and I'm, ta- I'm not talking taking masks from, medical I'm, I'm talking about the fabric masks that have a um, an insert you can insert the filter okay so you can i have someone creating about 30 of those for me now oh, neat. and and they they have the ties on them not the ear loops so you okay. can you can put them pretty tight and they have the part for the nose so i think those two things are, are could potentially be I mean, I hope the blanket thing really takes off, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. I Personally, agree. I'll be asking. I mean, if you go for a massage somewhere, I'll be asking. So do you change the blanket every time or what's happening there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that does that makes a lot of sense. Oh. Yeah, the mask one. Yeah, your your point on the mask makes a lot of sense to me too. I mean, I've I've looked it up. I've had a lot of time off of work. So I mean, all I'm yeah. doing is reading. So it's well, very- you- and will you wear it from start to finish too, like when yes. your client shows up? Yes, I think that's important because as it's been mentioned by even the CDC, how it can, for three hours it can just still be hanging in the air. And even when I come in after the chiropractic staff has, has gone, that's still only about an hour and a half to two hours after they've left. I don't know if they're carriers and and are asymptomatic or anything like that. So you almost have to go into it if you're gonna if you're gonna go into go back into work before like once the ban lifts, but before a vaccine. I just have to make it clear. Yeah. If you're doing that, you have to really take precautions. It's not just about cleaning anymore. In fact, it's more about those aerosol droplets. It's more about that than it is actually about the cleaning, although you still want to clean and disinfect. Of course. But just talking, breathe, even breathing, we're releasing something just even with that. You remember in school how they said, say it, don't spray it. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> so people that time, I mean, we don't mean to, but there's something that comes out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to be careful. We definitely have to take precautions and and uh, make sure that, that's that's another thing universally I would love to see. It, it come out, okay, this is, listen, therapist, this is what you have to do across the board. You need to change your blanket every day. You need to do, um, you know, you need to have a mask for you and have your client wear a mask. And there's going to be some people are going to be really mad that I said that just now, but, <laughs> but even if oh, it's, let's all take a deep breath. There's no reason to get mad. Breath. Don't get too mad at me. <laughs> We're all here to fulfill a mission of helping people. Yes. I would hope, you know, in one yes. way or another. Uh, no, I think those are great points, and that's that's all really great food for thought for for me and for a lot of people. I think so. Cool. Now, I've I've started to take the opportunity in these interviews to try and tap into some collective wisdom. I, I'm really curious to see what people think about this idea. Have you ever noticed in your practice issues come up in waves? Has that ever happened to you where you're like, wow, a lot of people are having problems with their levator scapula right now. And does that kind of thing ever show up for you? Uh, Typically around snow removal time when people are uh, all there. Physically, okay. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense for for your state. 
Is that what you mean physically or did you mean? Yeah. Or I guess, or, or anxiety, stress, does anything sort of seem to, do you ever notice things sort of carrying through the collective? Um, I do, I do notice that there's quite a bit of that listed on the intake forms Mm -hmm. more than I thought there was out there for someone that, that was kind of a a big wake up call. Like, well, yeah, you can't just tell by looking at someone that they have anxiety because just in conversation, you think, oh, they seem to have all their ducks in a row and yeah, like nothing's wrong. And then, you you know, on the intake form, it basically says, yeah, they're dealing with anxiety too, just like a bunch of other people. So Mm -hmm. interesting. So another side of this is coming out of this crisis, what do you think physically it's going to have? What do you expect to see in people's bodies as a result of this quarantine and this stress and this anxiety? I think there's going to be a lot of trapezius work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I do. I really do. Yep. Because people like to, you know, when they're stressed, they bring their shoulders up and yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of that. (laughs) And I don't think we're going to be lacking clients wanting to see us at all. There's probably going to be maybe, I don't do statistics, but if I had to do a statistic, probably maybe 25% people, maybe, oh, I don't want to get a massage. I'm too afraid. But I think there's still going to be quite a few that are really in need of manual therapy that are going to be knocking on your door. Are you open yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think it will be a great, uh, and this, and this collective uh, experiment in touch deprivation that we're all going through uh, the the end result of that will be interesting to watch. Absolutely, I agree. Well, Barb, Nick, diggity massage. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the Massage Hodge podcast. Thank you for having me. Fifty State Series. We'll chat a little bit more off off this interview uh, when we stop recording. But thanks for being here, and I will share with everyone in the in the show notes about where to find you and touch base and. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Yeah. Thanks for being here.